Remember, in order to keep things simple, we started off with a simplified Keynesian model, one that includes households and firms, but no government or foreign sector. Later, we will also introduce the government and the foreign sector into the model. For now, we first want to understand the basics of the model before we make it more complicated. The basics of the model is that equilibrium is where spending is equal to production, meaning when inventories are constant. Firms are producing the same inflow of goods and services that households are buying. So production and spending are equal and we are in equilibrium. So we know equilibrium in the Keynesian model is always where spending is equal to production. Now let's look at how this equilibrium will look on a graph. If we want to show equilibrium on the Keynesian graph, we first have to label the axis. We put aggregate spending on the vertical axe and total production or income on the horizontal axe. Remember to put a zero at the origin. Now let's see where all the possible equilibrium points may be, meaning let's mark all the places where aggregate spending is equal to total production or income. If total production or income is 1, it will be equal to aggregate spending at 1. Or if total production is equal to 2, then aggregate spending also has to be equal to 2. If total production is equal to 3, then aggregate spending also has to be equal to 3 in order to be in equilibrium. If total production is equal to 4, then aggregate spending also has to be equal to 4 in order for it to be in equilibrium. Now we can just connect the dots. And this creates a 45 degree line. This line can be seen as a guide. It just indicates where all the possible equilibrium points are. In the Keynesian model, you can only be in equilibrium if aggregate spending is equal to total production, meaning if you are on this dotted line. This is not a real line. It just helps us to identify equilibrium. Let's go back to the basics of the model. Another basic characteristic about the Keynesian model is that total spending is equal to consumer spending plus investment spending. This will change when we add a government and the foreign sector to the model. For now, total spending is equal to what households spend and what firms spend. Consumer spending can be represented by C equals C with a little line above it plus small c y. Remember, consumption spending has an autonomous part a part that is not influenced by the level of income in the economy and it's represented by the C with a line above it. Consumption spending also have a part that is influenced by income. This is the induced part of consumption spending and is shown by small c times y. Small c is the marginal propensity to consume and it's a number between 0 and 1, for instance 0, 0,8, while y is the level of your income. For example, if your income is a thousand rand, your marginal propensity to consume is 0, 0,8, then your induced consumption will be 800 rand. And investment spending can be represented by I equals I with a line above. Investment is entirely autonomous, meaning firms' decisions to invest is not dependent on the level of income in the country. So no matter what level of income, investment spending stays the same. 
investment spending is therefore totally autonomous and you see that because we indicate it with a line above the eye. Now we can draw the aggregate spending curve. The consumption function will look something like this. Autonomous consumption will give the value of the intercept, while the marginal propensity to consume will give the value of the slope of the line. Investment spending will look something like this. As it is entirely autonomous, it will stay the same no matter what the level of income is. Let's make this a bit neater. But remember, aggregate spending is equal to consumption spending plus investment spending. So to get the total expenditure line, we have to add the investment line with the consumption line. And that will look something like this. Equilibrium can only be on the equilibrium line, the 45 degree line. Remember, this is not a real line, it's only an indication. The real expenditure is shown by the expenditure line, line A. And we are in equilibrium where the expenditure line intersects with the 45 degree line. We are only in equilibrium on this point. To the left of this point, For instance, over here, total production is less than aggregate spending and we will have an excess demand. To the right of this equilibrium point, for instance, over here, total production or income is more than aggregate spending meaning to the right of this line there will be an excess supply. We will not be in equilibrium.